straight to the card cinema camera. This is our replacement to the very popular Canon C300. Next up, we have the brand new XC10. This is a nice and small portable 4K cinema camera as well. This one I'm very really excited about. This is our first time making this type of a cinema unit in our lineup. And then just for comparison reasons, I'm going to bring up and compare it with the 5D Mark III. A lot of you guys are probably already shooting on actual Canon DSLRs, so I'll talk a little bit of a difference between the specs to the current DSLR lineup. Now, the first thing we want to go down, of course, will be the weight. Right? This is the first thing we'd like to ask. How heavy is this thing? Basically, how big of a system will I have to buy so it can even fly the actual camera itself? Do I need to go with something as big as an ATI Thor, where I can actually put that full C3 body on there? Or you know what, there's a bit of an overkill for me, depending on how you shoot. I'm going to go with the actual spreading wings, S1000+, because all I need is my 5 d I'm shooting a DSLR on a cinema body. Or, should I go with something even smaller now, which wasn't an option before, which is the XC10. Now this guy is dramatically smaller from the C300 itself. And it still shoots that same 4K quality. So this is a 4K camera, nice and small, using all our great image technology in a smaller package. So when it comes down to weight, we're looking at 2.7 pounds body only. So I'm not adding lenses here yet. The XC10 are ready to go run and gun. So this is lens, battery, and SN. The SD card is a uh, CF card, itself C fast, 2.3 pounds. Again, you mount it on, ready to go with the lens itself. And of course, for comparisons of 5D Mark III without anything on, without a lens, two pounds. So they're all pretty close to each other. XC10 though being that little, little brother where I can just mount it on and go with it. Next topic, resolution and bit rate. As I was talking already earlier, these cameras, the new ones, can shoot 4K. So with the cinema, why do you want to spend that much more money on a C300? Well, it depends on how much of a frame rate do you need. Do you need to shoot 60 frames a second or 30, a little bit slower or faster? On the C300, I can shoot up to 4K, up to 410 megabits per second. For those of you that don't understand what that last number is, like I get 4K, I get the, the resolution, but what's the megabits per second? Is how much data am I capturing in that resolution that I'm keeping in my final product? How much compression is being applied? On the XC10, still 4K, just a little bit more compressed at 310, 305 megabits per second. So still a great quality, but again, still a lot of data. And again, for the 5D, no 4K option on that camera. That's full HD only at 1080p at 95 megabits per second. So our newer cameras have dramatically more detail, more resolution, more color information, so you get a greater looking image. And something that we had an issue with when we first introduced the DSLRs back in the day from our photo guys becoming into cinematographers was, I am a spoiled photographer, I like out of I want the camera to do all the work for me, right? I don't want to worry about it. And as you're flying around the drone as well, it would be nice if somehow my camera can track my subject automatically while it's flying around. When the 5D Mark II came out, this is basically how the autofocus during video looked like. Is this little clip on the left of the screen is playing right now, little peak. The focus is going in and out, the exposure is changing, the contrast is changing. You could actually autofocus during video on the Mark II, it was a little trick. But it wasn't exactly true out of focusing. It kind of was a little wannabe. So then we invented something with engineers called dual pixel technology. So we went from this on the left to this video clip on the right I'm about to, to uh, play. This is a video that we shot a while ago. That's Ronaldo in the back, basically. And I'm tracking his face on a long telephoto lens. And my hand is off the lens on an actual DSLR. And as I play the clip, you can see the background gets soft, but he is constantly nice and sharp. And yes, you can also see, he wasn't walking towards me, he was running full blast. Because I was actually in a syscall that they actually made right after the shot. And the camera is out of focus and tracking very well during video. This is our technology. This is something that we're very proud of. And it is called dual pixel. The 70D was our first DSLR that we introduced this technology in. And of course, we brought this technology on the C300 Mark II. So how does this work? It's actually a software and hardware modification. So a lot of people are kind of saying, hey, can I just buy new firmware and upgrade it? That's not the case. It's actually something that we did with the sensor itself. Our engineers found a way to basically split the photo 
amount of value you have, mathematically, so you can end up with, for lack of a better word, seed tag. So you can actually see where the subject is at, apply the calculations, send the command to the list, and to track the subject that you're tracking. And you have different ways of tracking your subject. On the camera, you can either do face detection, where it will track the face and follow the face, or tracking itself, where if it's a touchscreen camera, I can actually tell it to follow my actor's jersey, and it will follow that color pattern on the jersey. So it's constantly keeping the subject in focus. Or I can do something called flexi zone single, where it's not tracking the subject, and it's just staying within the box, within a part of my frame, so that little white square. So here's an example of using flexi zone single, where I keep them inside the box, and the entire time again, he is nice and sharp. And this is with a 402.8, so I am super shallow depth of field, long white lens, and with, any of, with the majority of our kind of lenses, this technology works really well. Now this is on our new 4K camera. So, when it comes down to auto focusing capabilities, the C300 Mark II has dual pixel technology, so you will benefit from this feature. While the XC10 has its own tracking on a focus capability, not exactly to a pixel, but another kind of a smaller brother version of that technology. And the 5D Mark II, of course, and Mark III, none at all, right? So you, you have to manually focus, or just shoot wide angle the entire time, so that everything is nice and sharp. Next up, we have frame rates. How fast can I shoot with this camera, right? Again, why am I spending a little bit more or a little bit less, depending on which body model? On the C300 Mark II, we have, you can shoot up to 30 frames per second to the card in full 4K, or you can shoot up to 120 frames per second in slow motion up to full, up to 2K, all to the card. So no extra accessories have to be mounted onto the camera itself. The XZ10, being the little brother, can go up to also 30 frames per second in 4K, but to do 120, it goes down to 720p. So there's the difference right there. What, how much resolution do you really need for your slow motion? That's, that's where the price range starts changing a little bit for you. And again, for the 5D, you guys remember, all you could do was up to 30 frames per second at full HD and 60 frames per second at 720p. So we're going to again bring up the notch little by little on our cinema bodies. Better quality. And I think that man was trying to grab a slide there. There you go. One more second. <laughs> Got it? There we go. 